We all know that feeling. You approach an ATM, put your bank card in the machine, and enter your PIN to find that dollar is all you have left. Some people decided to find a way to fix some flaws in the system and make money by getting more out of ATMs and slot machines than they ever had before. Here are 10 ways people trick machines to spew out money. Number 10. Homeless man accidentally receives $37,000 from a malfunctioning ATM machine. This is a very heartwarming story of a homeless man beating the system. Unlike a lot of the other examples in this video, the protagonist didn't just sit down and devise a brilliant plan to get rich quick. Instead, he just happened to find himself in the right place at the right time. The homeless man in question was actually sleeping next to the ATM in Maine when he decided to take out the reasonable sum of $140. The malfunctioning machine instead decided to start spitting out over $37,000 in cash. The police were called when someone noted the man acting strangely. The cops arrived as the man was literally stuffing cash into a shopping bag. The money was returned and the bank decided not to press charges. Number 9. Barnaby Jack ATM Tax not all scams necessarily involve someone making off with millions of pounds of hard-earned banker casino cash. Sometimes a potential command is happy to show his secrets off to the world without ever making a dime. Barnaby Jack, director of research company IO Active, demonstrated at least two flaws in a regular ATM in a news report back in 2011. The first hack involves updating the software of the ATM motherboard. To do this, he accessed the ATM master key which allowed him to open it up and get access to the machine's motherboard. With access to this, you can update the software locally, essentially overriding the ATM code to order it to spit out money. The second attack is a remote attack. All standalone ATMs support remote configuration. To do this, you normally need a combination of passwords and other information. Jack found a way to bypass all these, though he didn't reveal the specifics of how you go about this one. Number 8. Louis Kalevkio defrauded several casinos by making fake coins. You really know you've made it in the world of international espionage. When you have your own Wikipedia page and nickname, Louis B. Calafio, alternatively known as The Coin, successfully defrauded several casinos in Atlantic City and Connecticut until he was eventually arrested in 1998. His plan was endearingly old school and didn't involve computers, hacking, or the internet. Instead, Kalevkio and his gang created numerous fake slot machine coins using the heart and steel dies of the original. This system allowed him and his associates to claim hundreds of thousands of dollars. When the casinos finally caught the coin in the act, he was sentenced to seven years in prison. He was rearrested a few months after this release in 2006, having already gone back to counterfeit. His antics returned into a documentary called Breaking Vegas as a result of Kalevkio exploit. Most casinos phased out tokens and replaced cash payouts with paper vouchers instead, which can be redeemed at kiosks located near the cashier. Number 7. The Citibank ATM Scam Keshi Shan was the mastermind behind this next scam. In 2012, he noted an incredible gap in Citibank's security system and recruited over a dozen people to exploit it. Here was the glitch, Citibank's ATM allowed you to make multiple withdrawals above the amount you actually have in your account if done within 60 seconds of each other. Most people might point this out to the bank, or if feeling really underhand exploited for $20. Keshi Shan had other much grander plans. He recruited 13 others, each of whom opened a number of Citibank checking accounts. He supplied them with some money to deposit, and then they traveled to a dozen or so casinos around California and Nevada and made their withdrawals. Withdrawals totaling over $1 million, all members of the gang were eventually arrested. Number 640 million international ATM scam. One million dollar might seem like a lot to most people, but to the group behind our next scam, it was basically small change. A group of eight men in Manhattan and two Dutch citizens in Germany were arrested and charged over a conspiracy, which left one of the members of the group dead with an envelope containing $100,000 at his side. The scam involved a group of computer hackers infiltrating networks of credit card companies in India and the National Bank of Raz Al Kama in the United Arab Emirate. They raised the daily withdrawal limits on a number of debit cards. This information was shared with members of the group in at least 20 countries around the world who encoded the details into fake debit cards. These cards were then given to cashing crews who withdrew huge amounts of money. Over 40 million was taken regarding the murder. Investigators were unsure if it was connected to the scam, though it was a more than intriguing subplot. Number 5. 
Tommy Glenn Carmichael Con Artist Inventor Tommy Glenn Carmichael started out as a simple TV repairman. While this might seem an inauspicious early career, it proved the perfect training for rating slot machines. His early methods involved a top-bottom joint. This was a popular tool in the 80s that allowed people to cheat slot machines for a while. Tommy started out on five-cent machines in Las Vegas, winning a significant amount of money before he was arrested. And as he had a prior track record of unrelated charges, he was sentenced to five years in prison that might have stopped most people, but not Tommy. Once he got out, Tommy spent a year developing a device that later became known as the Monkey Paw. The device was made out of spring steel and guitar wire and could be placed through the payout, shoot, tripping the micro switch, and causing the machine to pay out over $1,000 an hour. Once technology improved, Tommy schemes did too. His next invention was the light wand. It shone up the payout chute so brightly it blinded the sensor and caused the machine to spill its coins. Eventually, Tommy decided to just sell his invention to other cheats and made thousands and eventually millions of dollars as a result of his scam. He was finally sentenced to serve 326 days in jail in 2000 and has since started using his inventions to help prevent fraud instead of instigate it. Number 4. Caesars Boardwalk Regency Scammers Raised $50,000 the 80s were a prime decade for slot machine scammers. One of the biggest single scams was carried out by a gang in the Caesars Boardwalk Regency Hotel in Atlantic City. Each member in the sophisticated gang had a specific role in the scam. The ringleader was John Vaccaro. He and his team surrounded a slot machine in Caesars. The mechanic of the crew, Ross Durham, pried open the front and inserted piano wires inside. Durham stopped the clock that was controlling the machine's reels, allowing the group to rotate them freely and manipulate them into a winning position. When the reels were lined up, it paid out a jackpot of $50,000. Unfortunately for the sophisticated team of men and women, they were being watched. And as soon as another member of the team, Fred DeFilippo tried to collect their winnings, the FBI moved in. Not not so clever after all. Number 3. Ronald Dale Harris Reprogrammed slot machines, fake coins, and prying open slot machines are all well and good, but they're all also a bit in 1980s. The real commend these days use computers and the best of them are hackers. Ronald Dale Harris was a computer programmer who worked for the Nevada Gaming Control Board in the early 90s, which gave him the perfect opportunity to access the machine source code and modify the slot machines to pay out when a specific sequence and number of coins were inserted. Over the course of two years, Harris and then accomplished stole thousands of dollars from Las Vegas casinos in one of the longest and most successful scams in history. Of course, all good scams must come to an end, and he was eventually caught after his accomplished Reed Earl McNeil was busted in Atlantic City. Harris served two years in prison and is now appropriately enough banned from entering all casinos in Nevada. Number 2. ATM Forking in Australia This particular scam might just be the perfect combination of the high and low tech, mixing the best of the hands-on 80 scam with the more computer literate scams of the current century. Using cards created from stolen data, a group of men in Australia went to nearby ATM and made small withdrawals. Once the money was presented, they then jammed the opening essentially with a kind of fork, confusing the machine and making it unable to keep a record of how much money was actually left in the account. This allowed the scammers to keep withdrawing more and more money. 248 machines were targeted and hundreds of thousands of dollars were taken in this manner in a scam that has been carried out all over the world. Number 1. Japanese ATM Scam Net Scammers $13 million The improvement in technology over the years should have made ATM more secure. However, all it really seems to have done is make scammers come up with more elaborate ways of stealing money. Take our final scam which once involved 14,000 machines and over $13 million. The remarkably successful scam saw computer hackers create credit cards from info stolen from a South African bank. This is easily done. What they do is add what is known as a card skimmer over the card reader of an ATM and somehow record the target's PIN number. The card skimmer records the magnetic stripe attached to the card, and once the PIN is known, a fake card can easily be made and exploited. Over a three-hour period, 14,711 cash machines in Japan were targeted by the presumably quite large gang, who made off with an incredible $13 million. Police suspect over 100 people were involved. So far, no one has been arrested in connection with the con. This was a particularly special case. Although this method of scamming ATMs is really prevalent these days, to protect yourself from getting scammed this way, make sure to analyze the card reader you insert your card into.
The card scammers, fraudsters use often look cheap and are much larger than ones you'd see on an ATM, because they're just glued to the reader the ATM has. Which method did you think was the most cunning? You know, of any other ways people have trick machines, let me know in the comments down below. Also, if you enjoyed this video, please be sure to like and subscribe to Brain Crane, clicking that bell icon and never miss another video. Thanks for watching.